It was night time on the space station. This meant that the lights were dim and there were a few people moving about as I made my way to one of the observation decks. That way I could get another look at her. The USS Boston. She was the first of a new class of ships designed by and primarily constructed by the citizens of Earth. Beautiful shark of a vessel designed to showcase Earth's technical know-how and to be a true presence in trans-system society. She was absolutely beautiful. A work of <laughs> space-going art. May as well have been a sculpture for all the good she was doing right now. On her shakedown cruise, it was discovered that the hybrid navigation and sensor systems was prone to fail in certain electromagnetic conditions. These conditions were fairly common out here. So now there she sat at her berth, doing nothing while the design and technical types worked her over. My parents always told me not to put my trust in things. Beautiful, isn't she? I didn't even bother to look around. Yes, she is. I've heard she has an all-new transit engine, three classes of torpedoes, maser cannon, point defense guns, and multi-spectrum shields. Her onboard labs and facilities are going to be the pride of the fleet. Eventually. I turned to face the speaker. I immediately shot to attention. This was an officer. <clears throat> Midshipman Brianna Summers, age 18. You're enrolled in your final semester at the Academy. Specialization, communication systems with the secondaries at EMT. Not the easiest track. You also speak fluent Ergean and some Petorcus. Above average grades, your family runs freighters out of the Cygnus and New Arabeth colonies. You already have a freighter pilot rating, and you're the first person in your family to attend the Academy. Midshipman, you arrived here at Station Hellsburg three days ago. You and 73 fellow midshipmen. Every one of you slated for a posting on the Boston. A ship, which I am told, will not be leaving its berth for at least three months. Yes, sir. How do you feel about that, midshipman? Disappointed, sir. What if I could offer you a posting on another vessel? A ship with an urgent need for a comm spec, and you need your six months of shipboard credits for graduation. You'd also be granted an acting rank and pay scale of an ensign. With a patrol, sir? A cutter? My ship. The DSC-675 Sasquatch. Before you say anything, be advised that the base commander is aware of this conversation. I'm speechless. I'll cut to the chase, Miss Shipman. Last week, Sasquatch was ambushed by pirates on the Arderton Rift. We took a point-blank hit from a heavy plasma cannon. Our comm system was disabled by a power surge, and my comm spec was wounded. He'll be in regeneration for another month, and then there's physical therapy. Your records show proficiency in maintenance and repair. Would you be interested in such an opportunity, midshipman? The patrol has too few openings, and there are too many qualified candidates wandering around the station right now. Well, sir, I... Now, I know this is a major decision. The patrol is definitely not the fleet. You've just spent three years of your life being drilled and trained in admirality, methodology, and mindset. I know what they taught you about the patrol. You'd have to unlearn most of that. I know how this feels. This can't be a snap judgment, sir. I'm aware of that. Think it over and contact the staffing office tomorrow. We'll need a decision no later than 0900. After that, the offer will be made to the next qualified cadet. I understand. One question, sir. Why me? You keep highly recommended. Sir. Needless to say, this was unexpected. But why me? Then, the answer came. Hey, sis! Thomas? Who else? I saw your name on the station roster. What do you know? Little Bree Summers is almost an academy grad. It brings a tear to my eye. Is my hair turning gray? I, I hope not. Sasquatch? <laughs> Navigator first class Tomas Pedro Luis Salazar Gutierrez. A <laughs> cutter? I thought you'd be jockeying a high-speed frigate. Are you kidding? You got any idea how fast a cutter can go? How tight they can turn? I switched loyalties just as soon as I got my chance to fire up a pair of Chiron engines. So you gonna do it? Sign on with us, I mean. I already told the skipper that you knew your stuff. I, mean, I hope you don't mind. Well, I... Thomas, I hadn't planned on joining the patrol. I've always wanted to sign on with uh, a... Ship of the line. 
sailing off to glamour and adventure in the skies with an admiralty vessel. Yeah, I remember. Look, sis, on Sasquatch, there will be something an admiralty cruise can't promise. Reality. Forget simulators, forget mock-ups. We get the real deal where we go. Plus, you get to work with me. Uh-huh. Bree, sis, listen to me. You would be wasted on a fleet vessel. You already have a pilot's rating. You're one of the smartest people I know. With the Admiralty, you'd just be another grunt on a ship. I gotta roll. I got people waiting. Look, sis, give this some thought, because we sure could use you. You can catch up with me at the Barrack 6. Thomas's family and my family were in the same transport union. Growing up, Thomas and my older brother, James, had been inseparable buddies. Thomas once told me he thought of me as the little sister he never had. Of course, he also once said he thought of me as the pet monkey he never had. Thomas had left his family to seek his fortune in one of the services. It actually made sense he'd end up in a helmsman on a fast ship. As long as I'd known him. Thomas had been a man who appreciated speed. The repair docks were the opposite side of the station from Boston. From one of the direct viewports, I could see Sasquatch, bored and undergoing repair. Sasquatch was... <laughs> not a work of art. She was designed for border patrol, search and rescue, and interdiction duties, as opposed to full naval operations. This was a vessel that worked for a living. I knew that the secret of the patrol's success out here in the wilderness was in its staffing. All members of the patrol crew, no matter the class of ship, were expected to be cross-trained. Sasquatch had a crew of 14. A similar admiralty vessel would require twice that many staff. I had the feeling I was going to regret this, but I'd made my decision. I stepped through the Berth 57 airlock and into the Sasquatch. Identify yourself. Summers, B. Service number, VPX34479. I'm here to examine the damage to your communication system. Can you give me any diagnostic data? I can access your hand unit through the port on the communications console. May I request that you place urgency on reconnecting my external receivers? Running blind? Yes, and deaf. Let's see what we can do. Midshipman. Ow! Uh, uh, sir. Hey, Bree. Midshipman, there's an entire series of regulations regarding access to any area of a patrol vessel. I should hope you would be familiar with this idea. Uh, yes, sir. I, I just wanted to get a feel for the damages done to the systems so, so I could make the most efficient repairs. How did you get past security? I boarded when the structural repair crew was going off shift. I guess they were too tired to notice a tech going the wrong way. We really need more personnel on these stations. Hey, wait a second. That repair crew cycled off three hours ago. Have you been tinkering around in here for that long? Looks like... Very well then. Report. Sir, I was able to repair most of the crystal systems located on the bridge. I was also able to reactivate some of the self-repair functions that had gone dormant in the biopacks. The magnetic discharges associated with plasma cannons will sometimes cause that function to go dormant. Most of the damage was caused by a massive power surge in the main relay station after the port shields failed, but it was mostly localized there as well. I have two cultures of crystals growing to make repair patches, and I was also able to reconnect most of the onboard diagnostic systems. Good news is that the damages were not as bad as initially reported close, but not as bad. Are you saying that you might be able to restore function to an entire system before we launch? I think so, sir. 
As I stated, the biopack system has begun healing itself, and I think I can replace most of the crystals. I should have the system to a functional level within 48 hours. I will need some additional materials to complete repairs. Here's a list. Bioinduction diodes, logic shields, EMP shielding. We might have most of this in the ship's stores. Gotta rest, contact the station quartermaster for the rest of it. Diagnostic update of communication systems. Main trunk to forward sections A, B, C, and starboard section D. Current status, 87% efficiency. Hey, that's pretty good. We were at 32% when we limped in. Yeah, but engineering and medical are still disconnected. Alpha, locate and relay all the locations of all breakpoints to my hand unit. Request completed. Requested information has been relayed to your hand unit. Shall I continue the system-wide assessment? Affirmative, and relay pertinent information to designated personnel as needed. Great. Looks like I have maybe 15... No, 17 breakpoints along the main line. Will you require assistance? I won't know until I've actually surveyed the damages. Don't let us keep you, Ensign. Welcome aboard. Thank you, sir. (laughs) Highly irregular. Yep. I can think of three regulations she violated just by walking on board unaccompanied. So can I. I like her. I thought you would. Captain, traffic control states we have the lane. Clear for launch. Gunner is. Head maneuvering thrust only. Aye, sir. Ion rockets are standing by. Kyrene engines are energized and synchronized. Awaiting command, sir. Mr. as you may proceed. We are at transit speed by two. That was amazing. It takes one of my family's freighters the better part of a day to work up that velocity. That's the good thing about Sasquatch. She runs smooth. Summers, give me the public address, please. Good afternoon, crew. Our orders for this cruise are fairly straightforward. Sasquatch is to travel along the frontier, and service a series of eight navigation beacons is needed. Following this, we are scheduled to drop two cargo pods to the mining colony. The last leg of the eight-week cruise will conclude by docking a station winter haven. At that point, Sasquatch will be resupplied and new orders issued. Let's pray for a less exciting trip to side. I completed my nine-hour bridge shift, then went person to person as I made certain that all of the crew's hand units meshed with the repaired communications grid and the ship's computer. I found the crewmen to be cooperative, and friendly enough for the most part. But I still had the feeling I had to prove myself to be fully accepted. I expected that. Attention! Evening meal is now being served in the ward room. Now there was a good idea. I had every intention of finding an out-of-the-way corner and eating quietly. That wasn't going to happen. Rihanna! Hello, Dr. Leeds. Pull up a chair. Join us. Yeah! Park it, and be neighborly. Thank you, Sergeant. I was at a table with the ship's doctor, the chief engineer, and a marine. So, what do you think of our happy little ship so far? Well, Chief, it's not what I was expecting. We can only imagine. We know what academy instructors preach about the patrol. They say the same things about us marines, you know? (laughs) Well, they weren't very supportive. What is this? It's delicious. It's a casserole. One of my crewmen in engineering fixed it. Everybody gets to take a turn making at least one group meal during a deployment. You're scheduled for next Thursday, by the way. (sighs) Thanks for the warning. But yes, the Academy staff had little, if any, praise for the patrol or patrolmen. According to them, your ships are run down and your crews are all drunks. The Admiralty Company line... The question would be, where was the Admiralty during events like the Lukasi evacuation, hmm? There wasn't an Admiralty ship in sight. The patrol was all over it. Lukasi? Wasn't that where- It was an industrial and biological disaster. 
One big planet-sized toxic waste dump. The whole planet and what was left of its population was dying. The combined expeditionary force sent teams to assist, and it was the CEF and patrol who sent every ship they could get their hands on. It was the one time the CEF worked with the path. The last time as well. Uh, just so you know, the CEF is our command structure out here, not the Admiralty. So what's so wrong with the path? They're just a bunch of intellectuals. On the eastern continent, CEF had set up some hospital camps. A massive cloud of poison gas drifted in and ignited. I'm told it was hell. The closest rescue vessels were from the path. But to be rescued by one of the path vessels, one had to swear an oath of loyalty and join the path. Three transports full of people, all desperate to get away, all disappeared into the path. Not a trace. Their choice in the matter, the path emissary said. Oh. So tell me about Captain Jessup. Is he always that grim? Yeah, but he's probably the best commanding officer I've ever known. The captain should have moved up to a frigate command by now. He won't go. I've heard some patrolmen will stay with their ships and the crews for their entire lives. That's part of the patrol mystique, right? There's that. But there's more to it. If Captain Jessup took such a promotion, he'd probably have to leave the frontier. That's a problem? It is for Captain Jessup. What we just said about the Lucasi evacuation. But his wife ended up on one of those past ships. She was a medical worker. She's been missing for almost three years now. Oh. He must hate them. No. Captain Jessup says that hatred makes you stupid. But every so often, the captain will take some leave time, disappear for a week or so. Usually leaves Lynch in command. Sometimes Lynch goes with him. Always when we're near the big path enclave in Sector P-36. Either way, no one on board really talks about it. Bad form. I can tell you one thing, though. He knows exactly where she is, and he's trying to reach her. He may have already made contact. How do you know that? Because he's Gabriel Jessup. Once you get to know him better, you'll understand. Wait a minute. What you guys just described is basically kidnapping. Doesn't the Admiralty... The Admiralty? <laughs> Babe, the Admiralty is only interested in building big fancy cruise ships that just happen to be on. Did you know that everybody over the rank of lieutenant has an assigned valet? <laughs> valet! <laughs> on the warship! Got a cousin on one of the Admiralty dreadnoughts. They've never once pushed the engines too hard. Sasquatch has redlined her engines twice in the past quarter. But they do have lovely crystal stemware in the chow halls. And a wine steward for the officers. Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, they, yeah, they've lost sight of what's important. Important? Service is more than having big, fancy ships and people in nice uniforms. It's more than needing a status quo to find your own sense of value. It's actually doing something. It's having a purpose. It's standing for something. Everything has a purpose. Doesn't it? Depends. How do you feel about the path? Well, until just now, I thought they were just another religion. That's what we all thought. Until the patrol started having a few run-ins with them. They take their orders from a statue. It's an animatron, Brianna. Each path ship has an amphitheater deep inside. In each of these amphitheaters, there is an exact, lifelike replica of the High Lady. She's their version of the Pope. Four times a day, she addresses the faithful through this network of animatrons from her abbey on Centaurus Prime. I've actually seen one of these things work. It's, it's just like she's standing there, talking. Weird. I still say it's idolatry. Good one, Moose. You've been reading again. Wait a minute. I have been on path ships. I have friends who are in the path. Summers, you're not in civilized space anymore. This is the frontier. And nothing out here is like it is in the inner systems. 
in the inner systems, the path is generally seen as a positive thing, a force for good, supporters of peace, education, and society. Out here, they're just one step away from being a heavily armed doomsday cult. The chief's right. Their missionaries are quite adept at using distractions and half-truths. Their emissaries have been known to attend all of the higher learning centers on these worlds. They learn all they can about the religious structures and cultures. Then they exploit it. Like the book says, the prophecy lies in my name, but I know them not. That's old religion. Most of us are. So is the captain. You? My parents were into it. Never thought much about it myself. Okay, so we have to be on our guard. More honest and knowledgeable than they are. Smarts we got. Baby, this tin can has some of the smartest gear in the system. We got smart torpedoes, smart drones. Every fifth bullet in the point defense guns is smart. Sasquatch might be smarter than us. Smarter than you, maybe. <laughs> Love you too, man. I take it the two of you have worked together for a while. Yep. Me and T-Chack here have been stationed on this bucket for a few years now. But I've been here longer. How about you, Doctor? I'm here because this ship is on the other side of the galaxy from the Salivan system. You know how everybody in the civilized universe thinks that patrolmen are outcasts and misfits or... People running from their past? You know, like the French Foreign Legion. Well, Doc here really is. She never talks about her past. Her personnel records are sealed by Captain Jessup's order. Very ominous. Now, I will say this. When we find out what she did, someone is going to be loaded. I got a week's pay riding on her being a mass murderer. I've told you people before. I was kicked out for singing off-key in the choir. Just to be on the safe side, I put a few bucks on that, too. Alert! Alert! All personnel report to duty station. Action station. Well, this was lovely. We must do this again sometime. Later. Subbers, take your post and update us. Aye, sir. Alpha, release console operations. Distress call, sir. An arguing vessel. It's garbled. Weak. I'll try to boost it and filter the signal. There it is. They're saying something about a point singularity. Damaged. That's it. The signal's gone. I was able to partially triangulate a position. Transferring data to the helm. Plotting a course change and search grid. ETA is eight hours. Summer, send an encoded burst to stations Hellsbrook and Winterhaven. Inform them of the SOS relay coordinates and request assistance. Gunneras, confirm course correction and proceed. He is hoping they're not talking about a sun dragon. A sun dragon? A nasty little toy the Argians came up with during the conflagration. It was a device that could be fired into the sun of any solar system. Within 10 minutes, that sun would expand to three times its normal size, consuming inner planets and reducing others to cinders. The star would then collapse in upon itself making a handy little black hole. The artificial black hole would then deplete itself within two to three weeks. All that would be left behind was an empty piece of space. We call it a singularity point warhead, and our game, the word is Sun Dragon. Position confirmed, sir. Begin search grid. Lynch full scan. Summers, try to reacquire that signal. I have the signal, sir. It's faint, but I think I can get a lock on it. Got it. Confirmed. I have targets. 15 degrees port, 140,000 kilometers. And I have an anomaly. Captain, it's a compacted black hole. Must be the place. Alpha access mission logs from the US Acapulco. They were near this sector six weeks ago. Any spatial anomalies reported? Negative. There is no reason for a singularity to form in that location. This and the irregular size and radiation wavelengths of the singularity would indicate a non-natural formation. Lynch, are the targets Argeian? There is an Argean scout ship just outside of the event horizon of that black hole. Engines are burning at full capacity to keep it out of the gravity wave. Irregular pulses from the starboard engine pod indicate imminent failure. The other two are path cruisers, safe distance off. They're just sitting there. 
Cyrus, contact the Argean vessel, offer assistance, then contact the PATH cruisers and ask their intentions. Incoming message, sir. Audio only. From the PATH commander. PATH captains don't like their images to be broadcast. Let's hear it. Attention patrol vessel. It has been decided by Providence that the occupants of the Argean vessel cannot be saved and should not be saved. We strongly request that you respect our religious right to make and enforce this decision. Summers. Inform the PATH captain that while I pity him for following a religion which allows him to dismiss the lives of sentient beings as unimportant, mine does not. A rescue will be attempted. Got that? Verbatim, sir. Gunnerez. Ready when you are, sir. I'd recommend docking with their upper hatch. Summers, relay that to the Argean commander. Lynch. Grappling hooks ready. Magnetic pads charged. Dr. Leeds team and Marines are standing ready. Summers? The Argian captain thinks we're crazy, but appreciates the effort and says that her crew will be standing by at the center docking hatch. Seven individuals. By the way, she'd like for us to hurry. Gravitic variance and hull stress increasing. Adjusting shields to compensate. Summers, tell them they have maybe two minutes to transfer. Warm bodies only, no luggage. Lynch, fire the grappling hooks. Got them. Reeling them in. Contact in 15 seconds. Brace yourselves. Bridge to engineering. To check, I'll need everything you got to keep us from crossing that event horizon. Understood. What about those cruisers? I have distortion, but it looks like they're still sitting there. Contact with Argian vessel. Sealing hatches. To check, engine status. She's stranded. You might want to step things up a bit. Pulse stress approaching critical. Using shields to compensate. Helm is sluggish, sir. Can you hold our position? For now, yes. Alert. Outer hull integrity failure in 10, 9, 8, Bridge, 7, all present and accounted for. Five, Hatches are sealed. Four, Ledge cutter three, loose. Gutter is foreign, it, sir. Emergency. Alpha. Emergency power and ventilation being activated. All right, everybody sound off. Who's still alive? Any idea what happened? Uh, Looks like we did something we weren't designed to do. Again? We gotta quit doing that. I'd say that between the gravitic effects of the fake singularity, the engines at full power, and the sudden release of the ship's mass, looks like we made a jump. We went transit? Not a full jump. Most of my nav systems are down, but I'm guessing maybe one astronomical unit. Confirmed. Lynch, what about the PATH ships? I have very limited exterior scans. If they're there, I can't see them. I paged a crewman to head into the observation dome. But assuming they're still there, and we did jump 98 million miles, they'll be here any minute now at max sublight. Sir, I have damage reports coming in. No casualties. Moose is escorting the Argian captain to the bridge. Dr. Leeds reports the captain's name is Vashon. Good. Access the emergency frequency, see if you can get an SOS off. Captain? I am Vashon. My ship? It's gone, madam. I'm sorry. Your crew? All alive and well, thank you. Your ship? We're in one piece. Madam, was that a singularity caused by a sun dragon? No, it was not. Those weapons have been outlawed for nearly a century. I do think it was something similar, however. Four days ago, an Argian ship, a freighter, was traveling along the frontier. As it passed near this sector, their sensors picked up odd radiation signals, a continuous regular pulse. They noted this and forwarded the information to the local science authorities. A drone was dispatched to reconnoiter the area. The drone traced the radiation emissions to a nearby asteroid cluster. Well, the cluster used to be there. Sir, Observation Dome reports no visual contact on the PATH cruisers. Not yet. The probe located something. Several of the asteroids had been mechanically bonded together. This was a mass roughly half the size of your Earth's moon. 
The radiation pulses were coming from the interior of the construct in a regular pattern. My ship had just assumed a safe primary sensor scan position when... Well, I think you know the rest. A singularity weapon has to be fired into an active sun to begin the process. It needs the mass and the fusion reaction to feed it. If someone has designed one that can go from a cold start... It's bad. Summers, please tell me you got that message off to the stations before we transited. Yes, sir. Main power is coming online. Captain, I can give you sublight engines only. The Chiron furnace is almost completely depleted. We'll need time to regenerate. Understood. Gutter is. Best speed out of here. Lynch the singularity and the cruisers. Singularity is dying out exponentially. Should dissipate within the next few hours. The path cruisers are en route to our position. ETA, 10 minutes. By the way, did anyone else notice that those were Immaculate Choice class boats? You hardly ever see them in this region. Generally, they're assigned as tenders to the main fleet. You believe they had something to do with the Singularity? Well, it would explain how not one but two path vessels arrived on station so quickly. But would they not know your vessel was nearby? Your patrol ships are regularly in this sector. We're a week behind schedule. We're not supposed to be anywhere near here. Torpedoes. Two to starboard. Deploying countermeasures. The second cruiser is now moving to flank us. They're targeting us as well. That didn't take very long. Sir, incoming transmission. Patrol captain, you will power down your weapons and shields, then prepare to transfer the Argian nationals to this ship. Adam, your call. <laughs> If we were to enter either of those ships, we would never be seen again. Guests of the path. You need to use the S word. The S word? Oh, sanctuary. I formally request sanctuary for myself and my crew. Suppers inform the PATH vessels that the Argeia Nationals have requested and been granted sanctuary by a representative of the patrol. As such, all hostilities must cease pending a full review by the Education Council. Lynch weapon status? Systems are energized and prepped. Firing solutions are locked. Stand ready. Sir, the PATH commander replied they answer to an authority higher than a mere council. Engineering, to check, I need power to the engines. Hey, we all got needs. I need another ten minutes for minimal levels. Both path ships are targeting us. I'm readying torpedo and hot gun mounts. How many? Enough. Captain, I... We are being graciously offered one last opportunity to transfer the Argians. If we do not comply, we will have to accept our chosen fate. Inform our friends that if they want to take possession of our guests, they will have to commit an act of piracy and board this ship. Pulse cannon, low intensity. You just had to provoke them. They're launching torpedoes. Point defense guns are online. Whatever happened to firing across the bow? Time to show them how well the Sasquatch can dance. Lynch, return fire, full spread. Firing forward tubes. Firing off tubes. Firing maser cannon. Point defense guns are taking the incomings. The shields on the second vessel are weakening. More pulse fire. None of their torpedoes made it through this time. The lead cruiser is repositioning itself for a second round. Target Mazers on the lead cruiser, torpedoes on the other. Try to overload their shields. Firing all weapons. That's doing it. Good thing those ships have light shielding. Sir, both ships have fired hull crackers. Nukes. Shields to full power. Cutter is evasive now. Let's jam them. They're vectoring in, closing at sub light. They want us to watch while they nuke us. Another ship exiting transit. It's one of ours. The hull crackers are being recalled. Attention, path cruisers. This is Sir William Grayson of the patrol galleon USS Northern Hemisphere. By the authority of the Unified Systems, you are hereby ordered to cease and desist these illegal actions. Do not threaten us, patrol ship. We have the right to defend ourselves against any of your aggression or persecution. Path Commander, your vessels are being targeted with masers, torpedoes, and kinetic energy weapons. Your shields are already weakened. And we're bigger than you, but by all means, feel free. 
Gutterus, turn us about and bring the tubes to bear. Lynch, they fire, we fire. Aye, Aye sir. sir. No response from either of the path cruisers, sir. They're too busy trying to figure out their next move. Another ship arriving may have upset them a little. Powering their engines. There they go. Transiting out of area. Gabriel, you in one piece? We're just flying, Sir William. Thanks for the timely assist. Our pleasure. Stand by for ducking. Two Argian cruisers arrived a few minutes later. Vashon and her crew transferred immediately. Vashon let us know the existence of a cold start singularity weapon would not be greeted calmly. Sasquatch stayed with the galleon until our Chiron furnace was fully regenerated. Then we set off on our cruise again. The crew recycled back to a comfortable level of calm preparedness. As for me, I made my way back to the workshop on the lower tier. Lynch had informed me that the mining colony would need some UV control units. I set to work laying a section of data mesh to a crystal unit. Ensign, you work entirely too hard. Sir, I didn't see you. We were preoccupied with loading that grid. What are those anyway, UV mods? Yes, sir. I was putting them together for the mining colony. Lynch told me they'd requested some. Well, they have these little fake suns circling the colony. They're unstable, so the controls are always burning out. Now, I uh, have to ask you a question. Am I in trouble? Actually, no. I received an inter-system communique from Admiral Harriman earlier today. I'm supposed to tell you that they fixed the Boston. Apparently it was a wiring problem as opposed to a shielding problem. Anyway, they have to hustle and get the midshipmen back on deck so they can crew the thing. Do you want to reclaim your Boston posting? Funny you should mention a communique, sir. I got one too. A friend of mine is posted on the Savannah. He told me that so far all the midshipmen have been allowed to do is sit in class and review protocol and the correct way to address superior officers. Two weeks of studying protocol and being told, there's more to come. Huh. If it's all the same to you, sir, I think I'll just finish my time here. Moose has already issued my sidearm and everything. Glad to hear it, Ensign. That's one good thing about Sasquatch. She's not the prettiest or the most dangerous, but she can teach you a lot. Just have to be willing to learn. Like how to deal with armed religious extremists. See? You're already learning. If you're going to stay on the frontier, you need to know these things. I think you've already realized that the outer system path is not the same as the inner system path. Yes, sir. I don't understand it. I have friends who are path emissaries. They're nothing like that path, Captain. I mean, the path ships in the inner systems aren't even armed. It's like... like. Summers, the path is a problem. A problem that those of us who follow the old religion allowed to happen. Now we have to deal with that problem. I see, sir. I think. Now we can face that another day. Right now you need to close down what you're doing and report to the wardroom. It's movie night. Movies? Yes. Costas and life support gets to pick tonight. That means it'll probably be a western. Is there popcorn? What kind of a joint would this be without popcorn? Of course there's popcorn. For a brief moment there, his armor slipped. I caught sight of the man this crew knew and followed. A man who cared enough about others to risk it all, knowing that his crew would back him up. A man who followed a religion that I'd grown up with but knew virtually nothing about. A man who had the skills and ability needed to command. I saw the man who would become my teacher. You've been listening to USS Sasquatch First Flight. Written by Charles W. Russell and directed by Brandon Butler. Featuring the voice talents of Noel Merritt as Brianna Summers, Scott J. Pig as Thomas Gutierrez, Glenn Hallstrom as Captain Gabriel Jessup, Kevin Powell as Maxwell Lynch, Deborah Adams as Dr. Alyssa Leeds, and Trip Hurst as Moose, Rish Outfield as T-Chak, Kim Giannopoulos as Vashan, Laura Fischette as Alpha, and Robert Brown as the Path Commander. Sound designed by Jerron Belboda. Featuring music from Jamendo.com and Kevin McLeod, with sound effects from freesound.org. Produced by Peter Franson, Jeron Belboda, and Ken Harmeyer. 
This has been a production of the Spirit Blade Underground Alliance. Visit us online at spiritblade.net slash alliance and christiangeekcentral.com. Thanks for listening.